welcome to Library of Parent Functions. Um, so in this video, we're going to be going over the big major parent functions. Uh, you should be taking some notes and like writing down what my little tips are about like how you're supposed to be um, knowing which function is which. And then that helps us with transformations of functions, which there's a, already a video on. So make sure you go check that one out, all right? Let's do this. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. Okay, the first one is a constant function. A constant function is a horizontal line. It looks like f of x equals c. Okay, in this case, c is going to be equal to 0, but c could be equal to 2, it could be equal to 5, it could be equal to negative 16, whatever. Okay, so the table of a constant looks like this. It looks like all the y values are the same. They remain constant you see what we did oh you see it you see it okay so um if f of x was equal to 2 then that entire y column would be twos if f of x was equal to negative 6 all of that y column would be negative sixes okay so this is our little graph um so we're gonna plot the points boop 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 look at that uh, when you plot the points, they all make a horizontal line. That's what a constant function looks like. The domain of a constant function is all real numbers. The range of a constant function is y equals c. So whatever that number in this, in this case, it would be y equals zero. Okay. If that was y equals two, then it would be two. Okay. Because that's the range. Period. Okay. So next one, after we do constants, we want to do linear functions. So linear equations, the parent function of a linear equation is f of x equals x. We know that f of x is the same thing as y. So y equals x, right? If y equals x, that means everything in the x column has to match perfectly with everything in the y column. So if x equals negative 2, guess what y has to be? Negative 2. If x equals negative 1, y has to equal negative 1. If x equals 0, y has to be 0. If x equals 1, y has to be 1. And x equals 2, y has to be 2. Because x equals y. y equals x. That's what that equation is telling you. Equations are always telling you what to do. Okay? So we're going to graph it, okay? So we're going to graph and then we're going to plot our first point. So we're going to start with um, negative 2 comma negative 2 and then we're going to go to negative 1 comma negative 1, 0 comma 0, 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2. Look at that perfectly diagonal line. This is the parent function of a linear function. The domain is all real numbers because that graph is going from left to right forever and ever and ever okay so all real numbers and then it's also going up and down forever and ever and ever and ever so that's my range all real numbers okay and that makes sense because domain are your x values ranges are your y values so if y equals x domain equals all real numbers that means y has to all the range also has to equal all real numbers okay great linear moving on to quadratic equation looks like f of x equals x squared okay so that means whatever's in the x column i'm going to square it to get what's in the y column Okay, so if negative 2 is in the x column, when negative 2 is squared, I'm going to get a positive 4. 
Negative one, when it is squared, gives me positive one. When zero is squared, I get zero. When one is squared, I get one. And when two is squared, I get four. What do you notice about the numbers in the Y column? They're a little bit symmetrical, right? Like there's a four on top, a four on the bottom, a one in the middle, another one in the middle, and then smack dab in the middle is a zero. They're mirroring each other. That's important because the shape of a quadratic will reflect that, okay? So I'm going to plot the first point, negative two comma four, negative one comma one, zero comma zero, one comma one, and then two comma four. I'm gonna do my little swoop through that, and that is the shape of a parabola. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a quadratic graph. We call it a parabola, okay? Um, the domain of a parabola is all real numbers because that graph is going to go from left all the way to going to go left forever and it's going to go right forever it's just going to get wider and wider and wider and wider and wider and wider and wider okay um the range on the other hand is how what the low point of the graph is and the high point of the graph so the lowest that that point hits is zero and the highest that goes is going to keep going up forever and ever so i'm going to say that the range is y is greater than or equal to zero. This is set notation, by the way, not um, interval notation. I might should add that, but. <laughs> okay, those are quadratics, so now we gonna do some cubics. So cubics, the equation looks like f of x equals x cubed cubed baby um so that means everything in the x column what am i going to do to it i'm going to cube it so if x is negative two negative two cubed negative two times negative two times negative two equals negative eight uh negative one cubed negative one times negative one times negative one is going to be negative one um zero cubed zero times zero times zero is zero one times one times one is positive one. Two times two times two is positive eight. So look at the numbers this time. They're kind of uh, opposites of each other, right? Pay attention to those little tricks, you know? But you gotta know. So this is my graph. Okay, I'm gonna put negative two comma eight. It's a little off the graph down there, but it's fine. Negative one comma one, zero comma zero, one comma one, and two comma eight. We're gonna do our little swoop. Look at that beautiful cubic. Okay, um, so my little domain is all real numbers because that graph is gonna go left forever and it's gonna go right forever. It's just gonna keep, keep stretching out forever and ever and ever. Um, my range, it's gonna go up forever and it's gonna go down forever because my arrows, one is pointing up, one is pointing down, okay? As opposed to the quadratic, both arrows were pointing up. So that means it's gonna bottom out somewhere. So you gotta pay attention to stuff like that. So my range is also all real numbers, okay? Um, yeah, that's cubics. Moving on. If I'm not recording, I'm gonna be mad. I always think that. Anyway, uh, absolute value. Uh, equation so the absolute value equation is f of x equals the absolute value of x so absolute value is when you put the number in there it comes out positive no matter what if you put a positive in there it comes out positive if you put a negative in there it comes out positive okay so the table of an absolute value when I put a number in there it should come out positive if I put a number in there negative one comes out positive one negative two came out positive two zero comes out zero one comes out one two comes out two. The, the formal definition of an absolute value is the distance a number is away from zero. Distance cannot be negative, right? So negative two is how many spaces away from zero on the number line? It is two spaces away from zero. That's why the answer is two. Negative one is how many spaces away from zero on the ne number line? It's one space away from zero. Zero is how many spaces away from zero on the number line? Zero spaces, right? Because it's right there. So one 
One positive one is how many spaces away from zero? One space. Two is how many spaces away from zero? Two spaces. So that's why that's really what's happening for an absolute value, right? So let's talk about the graph. Um, I'm going to plot the points negative two comma two, um, negative one comma one, zero comma zero, one comma one, two comma two. So look, this makes a sharp V. It's not like a parabola. A parabola, the quadratic function is rounded out at the bottom, but this one does a little sharp turn, a little 90 degree angle, baby. Okay, so um, the domain, let's think about this. Uh, is there an error on the left and an error on the right? Yes, so when that happens, all row numbers. Now, where are my arrows pointing for my range? Are they both pointing up, both pointing down, or pointing in opposite directions? They're both pointing up, which means it bottoms out somewhere, and in this case, it bottoms out as y is greater than or equal to zero, because zero is the lowest. Where that little point hits, that's at zero. It's never gonna get lower than that, but it'll get higher than that forever, just because that arrow's just gonna keep like they praising Jesus, just mm hmm. Anyway, <laughs> square roots. Square roots are a little tricky. Um, so f of x equals the square root of x. So I'm not going to use the same numbers that I have been using. I'm going to use perfect squares. So I'm going to start with zero because I can't take the square root of a negative number. So I can't start with negative two. I can't start with negative four. I got to start with zero. Um, so square root of zero is zero. Square root of one is one. Square root of four. We're skipping two and three because two ain't a perfect square. Three ain't a perfect square. But four is a perfect square. So the square root of four is two. Um, I'm going to skip five. I'm going to skip six, seven, and eight because none of those numbers are perfect squares. But nine, however, hello, is. So nine, the square root of nine is three. And then the next one I'm going to do just to fill in the table is 16 because 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, neither one of those is a perfect square. So 16 it is, and that's four. So I'm gonna plot as many as fit on my graph. They ain't all gonna fit though, because my graph ain't big enough. But in my heart, I know they're there. <laughs> so that's what it's gonna look like. I notice that I do not have an arrow on the left side because it's undefined. Like all the negatives, is, it's just gonna be nothing because I can't take the square root of a negative number so this is what we look like yeah um, my domain is not gonna be all real numbers pay attention it's not all real numbers in this one so um, I have to think about that uh, the leftmost point is zero and the rightmost point is gonna be infinity, so I'm gonna say x is greater than or equal to zero. Um, my range, the lowest it goes is the zero, so it bottoms out at zero, but the highest it goes, it'll keep going higher and higher and higher and higher, so I'm gonna say y is greater than or equal to zero also. So take note, because if you, you gotta know these the domain and the range off the dome, and uh, you want to pay special attention to this one because it ain't like the other ones. Okay, baby? Um, reciprocal functions. So the equation of a reciprocal function is f of x equals 1 over x. So um, the reciprocal of what? The reciprocal of the um, linear function, obviously. Um, so negative two, um, when I put that over inside the function, one over negative two is one over two, negative two, um, so that's negative one half, because one half, right? Negative one half, uh, negative one over one, or one over negative one equals negative one, uh, one over zero. In math, we do not like to put zero in the denominator, so that's actually gonna be an error um, in your calculator and then 1 over 1 simplifies to 1 and then 1 over 2 simplifies to 0.5 or 1 half same thing um, so when I graph it it's actually gonna look really funny that's what a reciprocal function looks like it has what's called asymptotes asymptotes are imaginary lines that the function approaches 
but never touches, okay? Um, so those imaginary lines are at y equals zero and x equals zero. So my domain, I'm gonna say is all real numbers except for the fact that it cannot equal zero. My range, same thing, all real numbers except for the fact that it cannot equal zero. So it's gonna touch every other number in the world, just not zero. That's a reciprocal function. I know you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's fine. You'll get over it. <laughs> okay, exponential growth. Okay. Um, so the equation f of x equals a to the power of x. In this case, a is gonna be two. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do negative two, 0 0.25, negative one, 0 0.5, 0, 1. 1, 2, and 2 to the 4th. So 2 squared equals 4. 1 squared. Am I saying that right? No, I'm not. 2 to the power of 2 equals 4. One, uh, 2 to the power of 1 equals 2. 2 to the power of 0 equals 1. 2 to the power of negative 1 equals a half or 0 0.5 and two to the power of negative two equals one fourth or 0 0.25. There you go. This is my graph. Swoop. That's what I look like, baby. All real numbers, because I'm gonna go left for forever, for forever, forever, forever and right forever. My range is a little tricky because this is another graph that has an asymptote, okay? An asymptote is a line that the function approaches, but it never actually touches. So what's going to happen here is that um, uh, it's gonna be y is greater than zero. So uh, it looks like it's touching that zero, that it's on the zero line, but it's just approaching it and never gonna actually touch it. So I say y is greater than zero, not y is greater than any equal to zero. That's a key, major key, okay? Um, and last but not least, a logarithmic function. So a log function is the inverse of a exponential function. Um, so this graph is gonna look like a reflection of the other one, okay? So because it's an inverse, I'm switching the x's and the y's. Look, that table is the same table, except the values are switched. That's the relationship between a log and a um, exponential function, okay? So that graph is gonna look like this. It's a reflection of that um, exponential function graph across the line y equals x. So my domain um, is x is greater than zero and my range is all real numbers. Those also switched from exponential. They swapped places, baby swap. And that's it. Those are your major parent functions. And um, yeah, you need to know this information. Uh, so I hope you are taking some notes, copying down some little tidbits. Um, go back through, watch it again. Uh, tell your friends. Um, and if not, I will see you in the next one.